All right, so we'll call the meeting to order 601. I don't see Gene on yet, but if he no. pops on, he pops on, we'll get. Do we need to amend the agenda? Yep. For this? Yes. What are we amending it to? We are going to add um, the request to cater permit. I'd like to add it after public comment, if you're good with that. I have done mine. Okay. And the other one is the Lister error. It was zero when I wrote the agenda, but then Mo and Judy spoke to their state person that does, I can't think of it, their district advisor, and we need to add, it's going to be updated to add $6,000 to the grand list for Verizon. So that's, those are my changes. Okay, so the zero turns into 6,000? Yep, to, to the good. Based on <laughs> for us, Verizon increase. Yep. Okay. Good thing. Move to approve the agenda as amended. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 You guys hear me all right? Yes. Thank you. you. Can't. All right. So we'll open up to public comment. So if there's anything that's not on the agenda this evening that anybody wants to bring up, now is the time. There is nobody in person. So anybody that's <laughs> On the Zoom end of things. Not a board member. Sure, you're still public. No, uh, just to, I haven't stopped to see the guys, but uh, I think the boys when they left the Christian Hill job with the excavator. WB. Yeah, they turned the corner a little tight. Okay. And that stop sign is black. Whoops! <laughs> oh no, kidding! All right. Um, I don't know they did it, but there's tracks where somebody went out <clears throat> through there and <clears throat> the sign is flat. All right, I'll, <clears throat> I'll let Morgan and AJ know. Oops, thank you. I think it just means you don't have to stop anymore. Right, get to go, <laughs> green. All right, anything else up there? Oh, gotcha. All right, moving on. So we'll, we'll go to our agenda item that we just added, which is the cater um, request permit for the town hall. Maybe, um, Therese, if you want to yep. take us through that one. So Shelby is online as our Jesse, or as is Jesse, because Jesse, <clears throat> oh, and there's Jean. Jean just joined us. Um, and there's Owen because uh, obviously their babes is the one who wanted to cater. So we have well, an employee on vacation. So I got the request to cater permit on Friday from Pam. And then I reached out to Jesse and said that the town hall policy clearly states there's no alcohol and then reached out to Shelby and she called and I included her email in the packet of um, what unfolded and her thoughts on um, if the select board was willing to approve the permit that there were, you know, could place conditions on it. So <clears throat> it seems like there was a miscommunication between Shelby and an employee that an employee told her that she could, as long as she had a bartending service was insured, et cetera, they could have alcohol. But I was just going to ask you, Shelby, did, did you get your application offline or did someone email it to you directly? Or how did you get the application to complete? I saw that you'd completed it and sent in your chat. Yeah. Um, I can't remember if Kelly emailed it to me or if she just directed me to the website. Um, I'm I not. not email as an, I didn't see where she had sent it to you. So okay. So her. yeah, she. we talked on the phone. Um, and that was our initial uh connection and talk through the event and all of the details and what we were envisioning and um <clears throat> because we had hosted an event at the town hall years ago and it had a cash bar at that event um i had assumed that we would be in, in okay shape to do that again and had and had clarified that with her too um so i think but to answer your question i i, I must have just printed it off the website and then sent that along with the check yeah and then when we spoke you looked at the website and said that you could see that it stated there was no alcohol so yes clearly know, like i didn't I said, I, <laughs> I just, you know 
so anyway, so that is true. That is what the policy says, what the website says. It's what the second page of the application says and all that. If you print out the whole three pages that are on the website. But I did include in the packet, as I said I would, um, your email. So you explained what the event is, what came to fruition, as well as the um, invitation that you sent out to the public or to you, mm -hmm. not the public, but to your members, I guess. So um, how many people did you say you were going to have? Uh, we don't have a precise number yet. We're, we're planning for about 75. That, that tends to be the number that, um, that we draw for this event annually, somewhere in that neighborhood. It could be, it could be 60, it could be more like 90, but um, we'll have a better sense of that in the days before the event. We are asking folks to uh, RSVP. Yeah. And um, I did look in the first page of the application that is on the website. So you can see some information on the website, but the application itself that you return does not say on it, no alcohol. I mean, it says it, you know, on the website and it says it on the second page, you know, cause it shows there's the permit and then it's a whole three page document. When you click on it, that comes up and the first page is the application itself, which does not say you can't have alcohol, but the second page goes through the requirements and rules it states there. And then the third page, you know, talks about cleaning and stuff, but if you only see the first page and you had an employee telling you that you could do it, I, you know. Well, and I think what's tricky in this is that they've, in a way there's already a precedent of they've had a cash bar in 2015. So it, you know, it's understandable that it even more so adds to the confusion. It does, and I think that you had this my I think that the same policy was in place it just wasn't enforced mm -hmm. is what I think so it's <laughs> so anyways it's enough it's it's a difficult that, situation put that in there so yes. that it won't happen again yes or maybe won't happen again yes absolutely I think that we could we should definitely change if we're going to do this we should do it I agree yep um, but I just keep going back mm -hmm. on, you know, when we may were made aware of alcohol use on town property, which was probably I want to say about three years ago, maybe somewhere around there. Cause, cause I think Owen and Jesse remember when we were looking at doing a catering permit for the, uh, band shell? for the band shell. And we went through this process. And at that point, cause we had acknowledged that there were, some things in the past that weren't following policy and we had put a stop to alcohol on town related permitting property. And then we had talked in regards to the uh, band shell piece. And I think we ended up giving you approval for that, but that was as long as you used the white church property. Was that right? And then I know you guys didn't end up doing it, but yeah, does that sound about right? That sounds, that sounds like what I remember. So I guess the only thing I just fear is this I know in the past we allowed it, we as a town, but I know we kind of corrected that policy like a couple of years ago to say that that shouldn't be the practice, right? Um, and I guess I see both sides of this one. So you get one, on one hand you have, on our end is, you know, it should be pretty clean cut that there's no alcohol allowed on any town property. But on the second end, I see where there's, there are some errors and omissions on our application process where someone may not be 100% aware of the policy and could theoretically sign off on the applicant, send it in without knowing all the rules. So I, I don't know, what's the rest of the board feel? Mm -hmm. I do have Paul and Gene or remote? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking along the same lines, Chris. I mean, it, if you look at the website, and you go to the town hall and you look at the rental agreement and whatnot, it's, you know, it states on there that there's no alcohol allowed. And, and it's unfortunate that um, that information didn't get relayed along, you know, properly in this particular case. Um, Cause we did have that situation at the band shell back a couple of years ago when Jesse and Owen wanted to um, put, put up uh, some sales there and, so we went through this whole thing. So it's unfortunate that it, that it uh, happened this way, that there was some confusion about whether or not uh, you could have the alcohol in town property. 
I think we really need to button down the uh, application process to make sure that it's pretty clearly stated. Uh, unfortunately, in this case, you know, it's been publicized in a certain way, and this is a good group that we, we want to promote having groups like this, you know, take advantage of the town hall and you utilize it for their gatherings and whatnot. Um, so I, Again, I you know I see both sides of the story also, and and maybe we could set set some conditions if that would make anybody happy. Um, uh, it seems like they're willing to do that, and uh, and let's move along and and fix the application process so that next time um, this we won't have this confusion. If is the application form itself. Is that a generic that's provided by somebody else, or is that our own form? It's our form. It's on the website. The application is the first page, the second page is the conditions, and the third plate page is like the cleaning rules and requirements. So when you print it, it prints all three pages out. Or, or you could just print one page, the first page, but it's ours. So if if we were to clean anything up, it, we might want to see if we can get on or near the signature, uh, something about alcohol. I mean, I don't know how feasible that is, but that's, um, I, I came into the conversation late, but from what I'm hearing, uh, we're in a difficult spot and I don't want to alienate anybody either. Also, don't want to alienate Jesse and Owen. <laughs> well, I mean, again, I mean, the the select board has the power it, through the policy to to make a, amendments to our policies or events at any time. Um, but then we do set a precedence every time we do that. So, um, I I guess. I would be okay with allowing it based upon us cleaning up our application process. Um, That's right. Because I guess there are some errors and omissions there that you know are faulty on our end. I think going forward, maybe it'd be best if we had a signature that's required on each page of our application so that it's a good idea. You know, yeah, that's what Gene was. Yeah. So the rules would have to be a signature for the rental. There would have to be a signature, or the cleaning there would be a signature. Yeah, I think it's good. It's good, it's good if we if it's good if we remove remove the human, you know, uh, potential for for confusion there, and just make sure that the that the form is properly done. So I'm in favor of moving forward with the uh, with the application. Did you want any cop? Are you making a motion motion? Like you're proving it or it, if so, with any conditions or? No, no, we haven't got that far yet. <laughs> okay, I wasn't sure. You just said, yeah. I was like, did he just say approved? <laughs> I'm trying to participate and take the minutes, but I think that that's a great point that you could put a signature on each line. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I think uh, details aside, I would agree that uh, you know, we were maybe not the clearest we could be, and that's a little bit on us and shouldn't be faulted to rural Vermont um, for missing it on that one. And so, yeah, coming up with an, an alternate for this event and then also cleaning up our policy and making it a bit clearer is, you know, our next job. That's right. And I would assume, again, we don't have a policy for allowing of alcohol on premises, technically. So I would assume in this case that we probably would want to put some conditions to this, wouldn't we? Like, obviously the alcohol can't be taken off site. You have to stay inside the building, you know, I don't know what else that well, would be Shelby, in that, but. In Shelby's email, she had actually sort of stated like, you know, limiting the options to beer, wine, cider, so no hard alcohol, and then ending service 30 minutes prior to the end of the event, um, which, you know, if, if they're proposing this as their idea, like I, I would feel comfortable with that if they're comfortable with it. And 
it's a good it's a good way to put some parameters on it um and like you said add add the language of no alcohol right. offsite you know all the all the standard legal pieces that need to be with that as well well i think jesse can address that and owen anyways sure. that can you talk about that jesse i think with your permit do you have to have a specific radius or <laughs> can you remind us of your rules yeah please? It's def- yeah the the state law is is pretty clear about offsite events it has to be a contained serving area so we'd be very clear with people that they'd have to stay in the building um, so that everybody has to be of drinking age. Um, and what else? There's, there's proper restrooms in the building and um, it's within the legal serving hours of the state. So, And it's also our duty just in general as bartenders and um, to make sure that someone isn't overserved or seems, you know, um, intoxicated, and we're also insured for this event as well. But that was a question. I had was insurance. We do have offsite catering insurance that covers our liquor liability. Yep. Thank you. So. I guess just need a motion from the board. Specifically setting the beer, wine, cider, no hard alcohol parameters. Motion, well, that's, I'm asking, <laughs> I'm asking that so I can put it in a motion. I say yes. 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 All right. Um, move to approve the permit for Babes Bar catering event um, with the stipulations of beer, wine, and cider and no hard alcohol with stopping service 30 minutes prior to the end of the event. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Shelby and Jesse and Owen for attending and, and um, to apologize for the confusion. I really appreciate you guys taking your time to, to come tonight. So thank you. And I hope you have a great event, Shelby. Thank you. And thank you all so much for your thoughtful deliberation here and your support. Really appreciate it and um, are excited to return to the Bethel Town Hall. It's a beautiful space. And um, yeah, so thanks again. Thank you, Jesse and Owen. um, And enjoy the rest of your meeting. I'm going to sign off. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shelby. All right. Need or want to discuss any more about changes to the permit before moving on? I think that we should just you should see it first of all if you haven't seen it. Um, and um, I think that you could be as clear as adding a signature line to each page would do it. Yeah. Frankly, because it does say on the website as soon as you click on what the rules are um, before you even look at the application, the rules are there. And then once you click on it. I think that a signature line on each page would be great, but we'll put it in your next packet just so you guys can eyeball it. And if you have any suggestions, so it would be good, but I definitely like adding the signature line. That's good. Okay. And then um, the next item uh, was going to be our continuing discussion in regards to the reclassification of Gilead Road and um, right now we were talking um, or waiting for some information to come back from on the legal side of things. So we had agreed that, um, well, since last meeting, Teresa and myself and um, just agreed that right now that we would uh, discontinue the discussion until a future meeting date. And it's depending on the information and flowing back and forth will depend on when we set the next date, but it could be the next meeting or it could be the meeting after that or. Yeah. We're just waiting for so. the two lawyers to talk to each other, to see what's going on. And then we'll go from there. We may have to re- revisit the right road issue as well um, that you voted on, but our attorney said that wasn't a big deal, but for right now, it just, since more and more keeps coming out, it's just, it's, it's just a never ending thing. So we'll wait if we, I'll have more information, then we could make an intelligent decision based on what everybody wants. Right. And then we also found out that the seasonality of the issue isn't isn't going to prevent us from moving forward 
So if it's winter yeah. or not. We would just have to make sure that the class three portion was plowed, which is no big deal because I've asked Andrew to plow just like his father did. And then the town, of course, plows our class three section of Bright. And Gilead, we don't have to plow because we never, because we didn't before. So, but he said you could still do it in the winter. So we'll just wait. Excuse me? No, exactly. <clears throat> no, just the right road section because we have to because yeah. it's class three. We're not putting our trucks on that road. No, 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 no. We don't have to plow Gilead. Um, just that section of right that goes past the farm up towards the sugar house. But Rick did it last year and Andrew's willing to do it this year. So move to table this discussion to a future date. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then we, I believe we had discussed it briefly last time in regards to our representation to the White River Valley Ambulance yep. Board. And um, Therese was going to reach out to the individual that was our current representation yep. to make sure that the- Good. Send him a very nice letter. That the move was, um, was communicated. Um, and then I believe we even had um, David's name was brought up last time about being the person alternate. that would fill in or be the alternate for that board. Yeah. So he has attended meetings in a non voting capacity and the current representative wanted Dave to fill his seat. So it seems like it was a. So we kind of went through the yeah. formal process here over the last two weeks to make sure that both parties were communicated with. So now this will just be more the formal uh, motion to yeah. um, to remove um, our current board member and replace that with the new one. So Right. So there'll be, have to be two motions, one to remove and one to, and I do have a copy of the bylaws from more of a, if anybody had any questions, I did bring those and quoted them from the motions quoted from the more of a bylaws. I'll make a motion that uh, we uh, remove Neil with much thanks for his years of service to the town. Um, yep. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and then we just need a motion for the appointment. Moved. So moved. Point Dave Alvigetti to the uh, White River Valley representative from Bethel. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have listers, errors, and omissions. Um, and as Sharice was saying right before that that had been amended of the grand list zeroing out to be actually a $6,000 increase yep, based it was on the changes. Surplus to yes. Like Okay. To the good. Yep. yep. Cool. So Ver its owner is Verizon, Verizon Wireless, and we they were tax exempt, but they removed their tax exemption so, um, on a portion of their equipment buildings. Mm -hmm. So it increased the grand list by six thousand dollars. And then we had two veterans exemption. One was removed because they did not file the veterans exemption paperwork by May 1st, 2022 with the state of Vermont. And one was added. And then was one was added. Um, yep. So those kind of just washed one was up, one was down, made it a zero change, but then Verizon wireless okay. um, made the $6,000. So. so we just need a motion to approve the listers, errors, and emissions. Certificate. Yep. So moved. Second. Okay, second by Dave, moved by Lindley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And they just need to sign. All of us or just me? Well, three of you. Three, okay. Yeah, exactly. Oh, just to backtrack a minute, do we have a, a letter from Dave saying, expressing his interest in the I don't. He, he's position? He's, he'd been ill, but he has been attending the He has attended the meetings and has had multiple conversations with Neil <laughs> over the years. And he'd said he would do it. I think I might have an email from him a while ago because this has been an ongoing process. And then most recently he was ill. So I didn't want to bother him while he was recuperating, but he did attend the last war of a meeting. Um, okay. Couldn't vote. But... As long as he knows. <laughs> oh yeah. No, no. He, vol he volunteered and he went, even went to the meeting, so which was great. 
Do we think we only get three quarters of Julie Hinman? Do what? We, are we only getting three quarters of Julie Hinman? I guess. Whoops, no, no, no. See, why does this keep saying this? Gotta talk fast, get 10 minutes. <laughs> Told you, you just got to pay the bill. I, I mean, I know. Like, what is going on? right, I that it out again. and then the next piece of it um, was just continue on our bus uh, budget discussion. So we're just right now, how the budget do we lose? No, no, I'm just go. I just got um, this out. Usually, at this, this part early in the budget discussions, we're just breaking down. Um, you know, usually we do anywhere between two and four departments at a time. So it's just really at this is a really high level look at the budget. Um, more, more throwing in our our wants at this point, mm -hmm. not necessarily just what we need, but it, you know all the wants. Um, and then you know maybe about a month from now we'll start taking a a more micro look at the budget and you know and start talking about how how it looks at overall. So. So don't get alarmed if you're saying, well, this is going up, that's 20,000, that's going up 20,000. It's, it's just right now we're kind of throwing all the pieces to the wall on all the wants and, and then we will start looking and fine tune it as we go. So, so Therese uh, tonight had put together um, town officials, public uh, parks and places, listers stuff and the debt services. Last time we went through constable town owned equipment and something else. Yeah, we did um, town officials, town hall, oh, constable. Town hall. Yep. And you can see I did update the town officials because I did hear, um, I did um, hear back from the fire warden. So I put that information there as well. I'd just like to say out loud that I appreciate um, under the town officials, especially that we're starting to be a little more um, thoughtful about what it really takes to do these jobs. And I know that that's going to take us a little bit of time to level that out. But Therese, just having you add things like the, the deputy, you know, estimated at 40, 40 additional hours a year, you know, I think that's it's going to be long-term better for the town and, you know, similar with the things we were dealing with the cemetery commissioner and actually getting him to a reasonable stipend for that job and things like that, that it's, it's nice to see it actually put into numbers and also be getting it to a place where we're working with more realistic numbers for the volunteers and individuals doing these positions. So thanks for putting it in. Yeah, there no, way. I think it's helpful, especially if we are talking about, um, if we're talking about, you know, what we're going to, you know, long term, what it's taking, and it makes more sense. Well, all these discussions have been these separate little discussions across the year, and so to see it all consolidated into one place was really nice. To all like, yes. oh, right, we talked about the health officer and the cemetery commission and the fire exactly. warden. Yeah, and I think just like some of our old antiquated policies and application fees and things like that that we saw that were just so out of date, and you know, some of these stipends have been whatever if it's been. $500, it's been $500 for 20 years, you know, and we all know that $500 now doesn't go nearly as far as it did 20 years ago, right? So right. Uh, now these numbers may not be exactly, you know, where they need to be. They might be a little less or a little more, but we're trying to at least make it more worthy for individuals to want to raise their hand. Um, it does take up some of their time and yeah. um, as we, as we see, so. I mean, I guess I'm also hopeful that that might entice some newer, younger folks to also be interested in doing those positions if it's actually reasonably compensated. Yeah, no, you're right. Okay. So um, we did town hall and constable last time. Yep, and then did you did you notice on this next one that there are a bunch of blanks in there? On which one? Parks and public yeah. places. Yeah, you mean down here? Yeah, because we didn't use streetscapes program anymore or trail maintenance anymore. But we don't. Um, you don't have to pay the lights every year, street lights. Oh, um, let's see. I, I, don't, I was just wondering if maybe there was a street error lights in the, is filled in. Forty-seven fifty-nine. Not in the budget, it's not. Yeah, no, oh, not, weird. Not <laughs> so oh, I didn't I know, know if maybe why. you're. 
Okay, I don't know Because there's why. a couple of them. Like, I started doing the same thing. Like, okay. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, Parks. Oh, yeah. You know what? I don't know why that's So there's there. a couple of... Oh, I know why. Because I needed an answer on something first. Sorry. I will slow on the uptake. I didn't know what you wanted to do about parks and public places. If you... Should I be budgeting? That was one of my questions. 30 hours a week, I was what I have for 24 weeks at 20 bucks an hour. Or should we be looking at, you know, like a position like we had before where they worked for Tim and they also, then they worked for the road crew. So I think that's why I stopped here because I wanted, I know that's why, because I was kind of looking for some direction. If my current plan is to put someone in for this summer, like seasonal position, and then add a four person to the road crew. So I just wasn't sure what your feelings were like about that. I know we've had some people who've said, you know, they wish basically we had more of a floater, like someone who could do building maintenance, who could do more, you know, park maintenance or, you know, help, you know, Cecil at the cemetery or whatever. But so I wasn't really, I was looking for some direction on this. If I, you want me to just do this iteration of the budget with, 30 hour part-timer and then just add add the fourth person to the road crew and let's see what that looks like before we make a determination or I mean, it's not like i had my this is doors the, being knocked down for people to apply to this summer position right. this is going back to what you put in your manager's report about yes, exactly. that that position so i kind of stopped there gotcha. because i obviously i was just curious about the rest of the so the the budget that we are currently in now yep we budgeted for how many? We budgeted for a seasonal person. Uh, well, and well, I mean, like total. I know we're down a person, right? Well, if we but we budget like half winter in parks and, and public places. No, in the budget that we're in, we only budgeted for exactly what I put in now, which was a seasonal. I did increase. No, the no, hours. but what I'm saying is, and I know we're not going over it tonight. Yeah. Oh. The public works end of things, but you were just talking about, yeah. do we go to a four full time? Yeah. Right I mean. now, what do we have budgeted at the oh, public works? Is right now we have three, three and a half. We have three full time and we have- Two half time? And well, because of Tim's passing, now we have three full time and two seasonal. So if we have, if, so we have the, currently we have the two full time and two seasonal. Well, we have- Three, three full-time seasonal. and yeah we just happen to be down a person so we have three full-time and two seasonal right now in the budget and then when you were talking that you might go to full full times full yeah go and to no full. seasonals or well we still if this person is not full-time then we still would need a seasonal to cover richard's route so i think a full, right? a full-time and one season mm-hmm so going from three full-time and two seasonals yeah the only reason four, we four, and, one. four yeah. and one seasonal gotcha so you so because, the net is a half more right because we need and sure i got this right because well, we've got we would have it'd be quite a bit more because you have a half half plus then all the benefits because right? when we had Assuming three we people benefits. we still needed one seasonal and then richard did his route but with richard not doing a route anymore that kicked me into needing two seasonals because richard was full-time he did half the year water you know half and half so with Richard taking over as a senior operator, as a chief operator, that position went. So I hired a seasonal for the summer, which worked out well, um, but we didn't have a lot of applicants. So it's, I'm, I also struggle because I don't want to have to pay somebody who has a CDL, the CDL rate to mow lawns in the summer, which is what we have done in the past. But the picking, you know, it's not like young, you know, we didn't have a lot of young people that wanted a summer job coming to apply you know we were lucky we got adam and he ended up being great and then he bettered himself by taking a full-time job um so if we left so if we left the parks and public places alone for now that's what i'm thinking then when we get the pw yep budget you would probably have to add a half plus bennies right i'd add a four so, i'd add a fourth position no but i'm saying you already said in the pw that you have three full-time and two half-time. Right. So I'd have make a fourth person with Benny's plus we'd have a seasonal. Because we still need to cover Richard's route. We still need to cover Richard's route. Oh, lost me. I well, have this. So we have, we have 
Morgan, AJ, and we had Hazen. And we still used Richard and we still used Paul Feeney. The meeting ended. That oh, they're trying yeah, to use. Not, Sam, but no, Sam, I know, but you're right. Two Sam, people is like. With two people. Yeah. We're not getting anywhere near the stuff. Like, because I, I complained about that hole up on my hill. Yeah. My truck is as big as any truck there is out there. If I, if I drive into that, we're going to need a big wrecker. Yeah. That's yeah. how deep that hole is. Exactly. And, and they'll, it's out in the road two feet now. Yeah, and I have let them know, and they'll be, they'll be two of them on tomorrow. So I'd say we're back to full strength. We have two, but yeah. So I think we just put the iteration of the budget together and leave, and leave this one as a seasonal, the parks mowing, and then put in a fourth full-time person, and then we're still going to have to have a seasonal to cover Richard's route. That's not a CDL. Job. Nope, you don't have to have a CDL. So you just have to have be, had the physical. That could be that, that uh, lawnmower guy. Well, that's why I'm saying water, I don't know if I should make this. And street cleaning, salting right. guy. The diff so that was my question is, with the parks budget, if I make this person full time, then part of their year is working for the town, doing maintenance and mowing and you know helping out Richard occasionally and then flushing hydrants etc then the rest of the money then they would be the seasonal person and you're right they would not need to have they don't have to have a CDL because of the weight of the truck they just need to have a physical and we have two trucks that don't need a CDL right but the issue is if one of the other guys got sick or injured it'd be nice if this person had a CDL but do you want to pay them CDL rates to mow lawns? We have three CDL licenses. If one of them is down, we can survive. Right. I mean, I'm sorry if you don't. If you want to leave your house at 5:05 .05 and you can't get out till 5:15, I'm sorry. Yeah. But tough. Yeah. Go back to New York. Okay. So it sounds like we'll just keep parks. Keep public, this one. Public see parks and places alone as a seasonal. Okay. And then we'll make the adjustments to the. Yep, go ahead. I'm I'm real I'm confused about uh, staffing what we budgeted for this year in terms of positions versus what we are talking about for next year. Uh, we had with Tim's death. Uh, are we short a position or not? Um, from what we budgeted, not from what we're spending. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm making myself clear. Yes. I'm, or expressing my confusion, which is confusion. <laughs> yes, we are short a person because once Tim passed away, Richard went to run the system. So Richard had worked part of the year for the road crew and part of the year for water sewer and mowing. So Tim's death did leave a vacancy, you know, for us to be understaffed. And then Hazen left, um, we had, and now we have an opening on the road crew, but yes, Tim's death did create a vacancy that so we have not. Overall, overall we budget wise, we're not talking about a staffing increase at that, in this conversation. So if I, if I remember no. right, and let me, maybe I'll be able to help you out. So. Right now, we're down from budget one and a half positions. Okay. And what Therese is saying, the net, the net to the budget that she's looking at right now is that we would increase another half position, but that okay. would become a full-time position. So we take essentially two halves or one, we're going to take one half that we're not using now, add another half, and then we'll have to add the benefits into it. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, yes. If we make this person full, if we make the summer person full time. So um, otherwise we leave this one. But at this system. point, regardless of, you know, what, yeah. What pocket we put the, the budget women, in. We're looking at adding a, we're looking at a person to go to the road crew. So there's four full time benefit fulls. And but it's, it's two a, seasonals basically or and maybe a 
Over what we currently have, we're looking at adding no, a no. net half position, but it will have to carry benefits, I believe. Maybe I have to think about it because if I want to, if we basically right now we're you have three replace fulls, Richard, two halves. We have three fulls, two halves, three halves basically because well, the kid two halves there. and the park place. Yeah. So if you do the park one the same, you still have three three fulls and two halves. Yeah. And you were saying that you want to go from three fulls and two halves to four fulls and one half. Yeah. So the net is we just half, figure, yeah. but you're going to have to increase benefits because that person could take benefits. Yeah, half, half of a salary plus, plus pennies. Yeah, because yeah. we'll have to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it also, it, at least from this discussion, feels very reasonable in terms of the workload and what what actually has to happen. You know, I think yeah. we sort of had acknowledged that we were we were slimmed back in. I, I remember in previous budget mm -hmm. discussions, the, mm -hmm. the two seasonal was like, we can do this for a little bit, but it's not a good long-term plan. Yeah. That our better bet would be training somebody and having a full-time, then we have that year round. Yeah. Flexible person. And maybe it become one of those positions is the floater that doesn't need the CDL can do yeah. mowing can, do, you know, can help in the cemeteries can do all those. Cause I know the road crew things. wants to go to four people for sure, which makes sense. So, so and I guess so, the next yeah. question, we're not talking so about if I, if I could ask so we're looking at potential situation but not dealing with the actual situation which is we have nobody really knocking down the door um, mm -hmm. to fill these spots but we're just looking from a, a budgetary position what we'd like to see in there as far as money is being available to staff these positions exactly right Yep. Right at this point, we're not talking about reality. We're talking about no. <laughs> what we'd like to see. Well, you know, unless something right. changes. You're uh, right. Okay. But you can't do it if you don't have the budget for it. That's exactly. correct. So, well, I think we'll have to maybe have a, and I know we're not doing public works tonight, but the other, I think following what Paul was saying is why aren't people wanting to take this position now? There could be a lot of reasons. One of it could be how are we structured in the market based upon our competition? So it might be an opportunity to see we can either talk about salary or total compensation, but how is our total compensation compare with whatever, Hartford it or actually, Woodstock or somebody that's good local? Right it's now. Good. It's okay. very no, no, I'm just saying. And I'll right? tell you because they just happen to do on MuniNet on the whole serve, um, list serve for VTrans. If somebody asked and every, you know, most every town went in and said what they had for openings and what their wages were. Mm -hmm. And I, it was interesting because the easier question would have been who doesn't have an opening. <laughs> and it's, it's crazy how yeah. many people have openings that have not, that have no applications. And so for us, we're in the same boat as a lot of people. And I have approached, you know, people that we've even heard of might be interested and I'm like chasing them down. And, um, but so I felt like, I mean, our wages seem to be right, you know, in the, Good. in line, but <clears throat> yep. I agree with that. So it's just tough as what now is you're looking at, there just aren't people who are interested in getting their it's CDLs. Unfortunate. It's unfortunate that the, uh, the uh, the younger people it's true. <clears throat> need more money than they nearly, so they don't understand total compensation. True. Well, they don't care about total compensation right, they when they're young, right? Exactly, you're right. And we've had this discussion with people before, and but anyway. But it does look like with the recession that we're in, and and all you all you do is pick up the paper, or go online, and read an article, and all the, you know. Ford, GM, uh, everybody is getting ready to lay people off. So I think you're going to see there's one way or another, there's going to be more labor between now and next spring. Maybe freed up, you, you know, know, so maybe there's nice. some opportunities to pick mm -hmm. up some individuals that might not, but who knows? I mean, it's hard because the good thing is, even if we have spaces budget, like I went to AJ and Morgan and said, okay, here's how much we were spending per week on Hazen salaries, Benny's, but so if we need to have culverts done or somebody do this, that, or the other, then mm -hmm. let me know and, or, or get it done, hire it out. And 
Um, Derek Aldrighetti happened to be doing some work on private property somewhere and Morgan ran into him and said, hey, while you're right there, this road needs X, Y, and Z. And so he did it for him. He's like, oh, sure, I'll do it. I'm right here. I didn't have to mobilize. I don't have to do this or that. So even if we have the money budgeted next year, if we don't have the staff, we will have at least the money to pay contractors. Well, that might be the thing is you may have to start looking at and saying, I got X amount of money that I could maybe go and that's yeah. hire out part time to get some of that work done. Exactly, right. and that's kind of what create a road or which, two or that's what we went. I went to or, Morgan and Hazen or Morgan and AJ and said, "Let's how much have per week to mm. spend? Hire a contractor if you need culverts, whatever. Let's just do it." Um, I'm going out pothole patching with them at the end of the month, so we'll see you? if you have any budget left after that. Good, that's good. good. I'm happy that they took you up on it, and um, AJ <laughs> and Morgan wanted your number, and I'm like, listen. I said, at least the thing about Chris is he actually knows what he's doing. He yeah. understands payment, how it works. You couldn't get a better for someone to help you. Yeah. So thank you for doing that. But I'll send you my bill. I'm sure you, it'll be in comp time. Yeah, <laughs> I know. In, in light of the conversation, I have something else to throw to the wall. I don't know if it'll stick or not. Uh, but uh, conversations that I've been having and seeing with our energy committee, energy committees around the area, uh, and the VROC and the, uh, the and so the housing initiative, there are a number of folk who are asking for or come up against the lack of staffing capacity to. Um, apply have a grant writer to apply for funds uh to deal with i mean it's a number one request that t work just uh came up with to do things like energy planning coordination uh respond to climate respond to housing initiatives in terms of a development person uh to uh continue to do the work that Therese has been doing with regard to um, zoning and planning, that all of those kinds of issues require the kind of expertise these days uh, that we said we didn't have when we were trying to run a dump. Uh, and th so I just wanna throw to the wall whether there is any way uh, we could um, either configure a staff person for ourselves to do multiple of those kinds of positions or uh, to be in direct conversation uh, with neighboring communities uh, to share a position uh, to, to put a little more meat and to provide for the capacity for our volunteers and staff to address those kinds of issues. There are going to be Boku Bucks coming from the uh, uh, Inflation Reduction Act federally and from the state regarding uh, energy and climate and other kinds of development stuff. Uh, I'm trying to argue that we need to be positioned to handle that. The conversation has also come up uh, with the Better Connections Grant and its implementation. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. So we, so I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to think outside the boundaries of our current capacity financially but also but how do we meet our current staffing which we've been talking about and also meet the staffing that we may need uh like it or not you know if we are to take advantage of any of these opportunities and or unfunded mandates as they begin to come down on us I'm just going to, I'll add a full-time person into the municipal office budget 
and see what it looks like. I mean, it's just going to be the first run of the budget. So it, we can add, you know, a full-time staff person. We already had $10,000 in there from last year in the existing budget, excuse me, not last year, the existing budget. So why don't we just put a full-time person in there and see what it looks like with the whole budget? I mean, it's and it's all you could always take it to the, to the town as a, as a, as a, as a special addition to the budget rather than anyway, I, I, well, yeah. I just think it's something to throw to the wall so that we really need to think about. I think it's true. I think capacity is a big deal. And um, we plan on having that conversation with better connections and you're right. And I know two rivers um, put out a great survey that I responded to and a bunch of people did. And they're thinking about doing basically for higher services, which would be great. And, but it's also hard for them because they only have so much capacity to, to oversee X amount of employees. So, um, but I'm just going to put a full-time person there and let's just see what it looks like, Gene. Thank you. You're welcome. The only pushback that I would have on that is uh, obviously looking at a, adding a full-time person to the municipal office is, I would say roughly when you figure in the total package is probably 70, $70,000 easy, maybe more. That's for, maybe salary, but that's not counting. I'd be talking 150. Right. And I, I don't see where that's, where that's <laughs> ever going to be reasonable though. It's by the time. We had all the benefits and, and so on, uh, office expenses, et cetera. You're, you're not talking about 70. You're talking well, about more. How, how about we get Teresa's contract finished first before we talk about that one? Because she might jump ship on me. She might not sign the contract. Because going back to something that Jean was saying earlier, though, is that there are there's potential of towns sharing a position like this Absolutely. so that it yeah. It could drop our cost to something that does feel more reasonable, right? 150 does not feel no. easily squished into our budget. Right. Um, it also could be that there's grant money out there to pay for portion of a of a of an employee or something. So it's all it's hard right now because you know we budget 18 months out, or we don't have a crystal ball. We haven't seen you know for sure the Inflation Reduction Act. So sometimes you're just waiting for all this stuff to sugar out and. Gene's right. You want to be in a good place to jump on it. But at the same time, it's difficult because you don't exactly know what you're going to get. But, um, but I don't, let's just put it in there and see what the budget looks like. And, can right. and would it be more reasonable to do something <clears throat> much like we do with we we've been doing with like our mowing and different a contracted or just even having like a contracted help category so it's not a not a full employee but a contracted person Which we do now we have ten thousand dollars in there for right that. and then but if two rivers comes up yeah. with, hey we're gonna we're gonna house this employee but we'll subcontract them out yeah. to different towns for those things then we're ready 18 months down the road exactly. with okay we've got a budget for that right exactly because we did do ten thousand of contracted labor so it's a good idea and i know two rivers is working on what we're thinking about everybody's kind of realizing the same right. thing, which is capacity and trying to figure out how to get there. But we can, um, you know, we could look at it a couple of ways. So I'm happy to, to do that. I, think putting something I, I was reading one of the reports. I think it was, it was from the, the seven town consortium group <clears throat> that stated that they were talking about a staffing position that would be shared by all the area towns that would come in at about 150. Um, I'm not sure which group that was, but I, I think I read that last week. So it's it's not an unreasonable, from their perspective anyway, amount. But it would certainly have to be shared by uh, by the seven, you know, at least the seven town consortium. And the yeah, and we've got five towns already that that uh, the energy committees have been talking to about uh, creating such a thing. Uh, so I, not those conversations need to be spurred on, uh, and, and Nicole mentioned 140, I think in some work research she'd done with two rivers about, and that was in their last minutes. So I, that's pulling that number from, but I, 
yes, I, I am thinking. <laughs> I'm wondering if we can at least, I'm throwing it at the wall, saying what can we discover and, and do we have any, uh, is there an, any inclination that we move forward with conversations, real conversations uh, from Royalton to Barnard to Rochester, maybe even Northfield, um, to think about that kind of thing? I mean, I think to Gene's point, like if, if we were to put something in the budget to talk about, maybe at say, you know, I'll make it up that there's 12 regional towns. And if we all split it, it would be make it up $15,000 for each town. And I putting that in your budget, but I, 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 I would not be a proponent to put a full-time position in our budget for that. I think that's not affordable for our town and you're not going to get enough out of that position to make it worth hundred thousand dollars a year um right but a good middle ground and like teresa's saying we already have ten thousand so maybe we bump that 10 to 20 and it gives us some wiggle room that we could contract it out or we you know right hire part part so is, is, so. any, is two rivers or any of those organizing talking about staffing in the person to contract out i think so paul could probably answer that question better because he's on their committee i've just read their notes and heard, you know, secondhand, but I think two rivers is having that conversation. They were compiling their survey about, is that true Paul about seeing what it is they want to offer? Well, well they, they currently have one person on staff that seems to have been thrown kind of into that, that whole area of investigation. Uh, but it's certainly not feasible to, to spread that across the entire two rivers, you know, coverage area. Um, so they've started the initial conversations, but the, the f one fellow that they did hire is instantly overwhelmed with um, towns, you know, trying to develop their plans and figure out which direction they want to go to the point where he has to, he had to stop and just concentrate on, on certain areas. Um, so it's not, I mean, we, it's easy to say, well, let's throw another 20 in there or throw another 50 in there or throw another, you know, the des undesignated amount in there that to, for the potential of having this. But the bottom line is it's going to inflate the tax rate and it's going to push us into a position where, where we really need to concentrate on the taxpayers, what they want to do, what direction they want to go. So I agree with Chris. I mean, putting in a full-time position is, is just not feasible at this point with all the other needs that we have. And Two Rivers is working to develop it, but it's going to be a more regional approach. Uh, it's going to have to be because we're not the only small town that's dealing with tight budgets. Um, so. True. And on um, the gentleman that you're speaking of that was kind of overwhelmed, was he just doing um, – energy or what was do you remember what he was working on just out of, or just overwhelmed in general because they threw a lot at him um it just overwhelmed in general in trying to set up a a, a group effort amongst ah. a small amount of towns small group yep. of towns to kind of develop plans um and and to set up a a, a you know, a form that other towns could follow to try to develop their uh, schemes about which direction they wanted to go. Yeah. Uh, and he got tied, you know, he got tied up with several, several of the bigger towns too. And you get into white river and Hartford and, and, you know, and, and they not even, he wasn't even talking about up North. Uh, we're just talking about these local towns. Uh, it's very quick to get over. He got overwhelmed pretty quickly with, um, these, you know, folks trying to set up these uh, templates. I think that we forget how many towns Two Rivers actually covers. Yeah, we have 30, I think 35 different towns, uh, something like that, or different uh, areas that participate in just our Two Rivers. I mean, uh, and that's only one group. Yeah. Uh, compared to statewide. And, and that, that's a uh, that's a strong argument for, uh, in my view, 
we're not doing it regionally with other communities because other communities have different perspectives or different needs locally, perhaps. Uh, and but there are so many different positions <laughs> that are looking for those same kinds of funds that for us to think about a, a person um, that we could, uh, like they did in uh, community I reported before on with, uh, with uh, was it Fairly? Uh, who did uh, zoning planning and development in yeah. a position uh, where we would combine several positions uh, and rather and do it our own, write our own job description. That's another something that just I would I want to have the conversation more than than solve it, uh, and it may be that we simply ask the community if this is something that they want to do uh, because of what's happening around us. But that's we'll definitely have the discussion with the, um, you know, in the budget, I'll make sure that we I put some notes in there and that we throw a number in it. And, you know, I certainly zoning economic development, um, think you know, planning that they go hand in hand for sure. But so I'll just, I'll increase the contract number, which seems like the consensus. We'll see what it looks like. And when we, you know, and then you'll be able to have a really, you know, a discussion about it when you, you still have time for obviously budget and warning and all that. So, but I'll make sure it's in there, Gene. Thank you. You're welcome. For the budget, as far as listers, that was their budget. And then I just did the debt service. It would seem to me, not to get off on, not to leave this subject quite yet, if towns were to have uh, money to contract out for assistance in energy, uh, housing, whatever, grant writing, mm -hmm. that if more towns would do that, it would um, lead, lead the two rivers to hire more people mm -hmm. to do that job. And I really believe that that's the road to go, not us, because if Royalton, Rochester, Randolph, and Bethel each do a guy for $150,000, all four of those guys are gonna know all this stuff. And $600,000 by an awful good person that could handle it. Yeah, I think for Two Rivers, I think that the conversation- if the need is there, don't they, won't they, don't yeah. you believe that they will find a way to fill the need? I think, you know, it'd be a good conversation to have with Peter Gregory. I can certainly send him an email. I think that for sure them, they're probably, there's a good chance they're at capacity with their office space that, you know, maybe them to how many people they want to oversee, you know, but it's a good conversation. I'll, I'll email Peter Gregory. Um, he's the executive director, a very nice man of Two Rivers, and maybe he'll even um, come in and talk to us. Yeah, Peter, Peter is involved on the state level too. He's addressing the legislature to try to free up funding um, from the, from that level also. He, he's His big focus is with the working with the legislature to try to free up some funds for some of the local towns to be able to do some of this. Yeah, that's, I think that's another thing, place to look, yep. Yeah. I think that Dave makes a great point. And I do think you're right. I do think that yes, regionally is better because you're right. You're, then you have a template, right? So what's good in Rochester, to, I mean, there's a lot of things that would be very similar in every town. So I think you're right. Those people out there, we can't find people to drive trucks or show the sidewalks or- or Again, the car is in front of the- You know, horse, and if you all so of a sudden you want, you want uh, 75 guys that know how to write grants, mm -hmm. you're in trouble. Yeah. But if right. you could figure out a way to get five guys that know grant writing right. and contract them, contract them so they don't, they come and work with Bethel now. Right. Bethel's paying them right now this week. Right. They, they haven't got 17 people on their desk. They're paying, we're working with Bethel right now. They're contracting right. Bethel. Right. And they're contracting Rochester. Yeah. I mean, I'm no businessman, but I'm thinking no, but this you, would you work get better. that focused attention yes. for what yeah. you want and not the disparate. Exactly. And, and you're right. And the fact is, too, is they could also contract with Two Rivers. So then maybe Two Rivers doesn't actually have to house them. They work from home. Yeah, so that's a really good point. Yes, absolutely, Dave. I agree. Okay. 
All right. So you can keep He's on. We're going to get booted again. In These 10 are the minutes, discussions so. they should be having in Montpelier before they put the cart in front of the horse. Yep. Yep. I agree. They should have yeah. this before they make all these initiatives, they should have the roadmap mm -hmm. filled in, not say these are all the fictitious things we want to accommodate and then we're going to send it to you to figure out. Because, you know what I mean? Like they easily could come up with this. They could say we're going to fund each one of these regional planning commissions. And yeah, he's saying, gonna... you know, you slowed all that down. How? No lobbyist. Yeah, yeah. True. no doubt. So I guess the question I had with the listers piece was, so when we were talking about reappraisals coming, yep, and we had a chunk of money in there for reappraisals, yep. mm -hmm. and and if I remember right, and I can't remember what it was, but we had a piece that we were going to have to do on our own, right? Yeah, we had money. Yes, we and had we had above and beyond the budget. We, we said that it was going to take X amount of money to do some of those pieces, and yes. now now you have the listers up $17,000. So is that extra $17,000, that piece that you're thinking for, for just the repra reappraisal year, or you're saying that's what the lister budget would be going forward? This is what they came up with and the, their budget. They're saying 10 hours each per week because of the reappraisal. So Mo did say to me that, um, and I, that maybe a portion of this money which I th is for their wages, the 40 could actually come out of that capital fund because we do have the money in there and we had right. a reappraisal plan. So he was saying, uh, they were saying in their iteration, these are the new rates, 20 hours per week reappraisal starts in July. So I think that this was kind of a one-off for um, because of the reappraisal. So with the two year rolling reappraisal, I think that we could actually downgrade this number and take some of this money out of the well that was going to be my yeah fund. yes so that was my question yep. is how much of that money can we take from the reappraisal fund so what would it look like a big chunk that it exactly looks, so i'll take years. a look because this is just the budget they put forward so i'll see and i'll ask them their right. opinion they've okay. never been through a reappraisal right. so we're going to ask because when i was looking at it, it seemed like that was basically them saying this is what it's going to take to get through that reappraisal and it's a two year. And then year. I got thinking, well, there's some money set aside for us to do that. Yep. So I'll ask. So maybe them, that would offset some of that, so we don't have to show like a seventeen thousand dollars increase. Yeah. Maybe it's a I'll ask five thousand dollars increase, and twelve of it's being picked up by the reappraisal or something. Yeah, yeah. I'll see what they think, okay. how much they need, and then um, obviously too, you know, as Mo likes to tell us that he's not getting any younger, and that you know, <laughs> so you're going to have to replace them. And he's right. People are not going to do the listing job for $15 an hour. And it's such an important job. The town's whole landscape is built on the state's landscape is yeah. built on a tax base. So you definitely need someone to come in. I think, you know, there's a chance eventually that that'll be a contract situation for sure. That's one thing that we've talked well, about. Well, if you just look at it over the last five years, I mean, yeah, the, the lister budget, if we went as proposed would more than double. Yeah, you know, in the last five years. So yeah, so not, I, to, not to say we had it right five years ago, but you know, exactly. it's quite the jump. You know, it is. I agree. So that is that on the budget. And then I had. Oh, I don't mind that. Um, I know we acknowledged this, but when we do whatever the next round of budget mm -hmm. are, can we see the full parks and public places with the yes, yes. I'm cool. sorry about that. I think I yeah, saw really like to, uh, I, I, well, I kind of calculated it across the yeah. lines, but it's still nice to just see it on one yeah, place. I so stopped. even even though we've sort of discussed it already, it'd be nice to just visualize. Yeah, no, it. I will. I'll finish cool. that. And um, I made a note, but like I think I got caught yeah. up in the whole employee thing and was like, all right, you know what? I'll stop here. And then I'll have for sure have the um, town office budget recreation budget you know maybe fire and public works it depends where the where they stand right now okay um and then american rescue plan there's nothing spending new we didn't have anything new on that <clears throat> no the auditors are coming next week so i'm waiting for them to answer a couple questions for me so i'll have a little okay. better financial guidance there all right. And then Teresa and I sat down, went through town manager's contract that um, you guys 
authorized myself to negotiate last time. And Therese sent out the... An email version. The adjustments on what we had used for her agreement of employment last time versus the edits for this time. Everybody get that? Um, so it was not in your packet. It was a separate email. No, I know. And I would think for Teresa's sake, on number six, for data zero to the end of um, those numbers. Chris has the edited copy. I don't have one. Because right now you're... Okay, we'll make a zero on it. Number six. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll make another. I don't know. I, we get, <laughs> just, just, I don't know. Locked in for two years. I, yeah, oh, right. it, all, all that, all You're that negotiation is out the window. All, all that negotiation. <laughs> yeah. uh, but a majority of, well, I'll say a majority. Probably half of the edits were really just editorial cleanups. Um, things that really didn't pertain to her employment this time around. And then some of it was really just updating um, current numbers um, salary wise. And then the, if you saw the, the only thing that was, was off was the way we had the um, paid time off piece. Um, so we corrected that. It was really just a cleanup, change the dates. It, it's just a it weird current. thing because technically she could carry over because we allow so much of a carryover. And if she did the, if she had some carried over <laughs> and her new annual clicked in, she would automatically be over her 30. I'd automatically weeks. be violating my contract. So like that's this. why we put that in there of like <laughs> allowing that, but also we, we put it in there with the select board approval. So yeah, it gives us some latitude to allow that or or gives us the latitude to say like we did last year we'll allow you to carry that over but you got to use it within yeah. six months or something so yeah it was um, just kind of some funny stuff so pretty much it was just edit funny business and it's health, insur the, health insurance i don't i take health insurance so i plan on changing numbers. we're just trying to i was just trying to clean some of it up but really there's no change. The term is the change. I didn't want a three-year contract. I want a two-year contract. And then that. 115. Where did I miss the, where'd, I'm off. Where'd we miss the. I don't know. I don't have it in front of me. She said number six. Number six. Um, yeah. If you look. Because I know it, it makes it a little confusing with the edit. If you look at the edits with it. Oh, that's it's not, just that's not what I'm looking at right now. Oh, so okay. I just have it in the thousands, not the 10,000. Oh, You're just missing a zero. I'll make a note. Oh, maybe, <clears throat> maybe like, this is the, that's the version I have. Which would be missing a zero. Yeah, because you have a zero, a zero. Yeah, you have your zeros are offset with a number in between. Oh, okay. So it looks, but I'll when it's edited it. out okay. and actually I'll done. make sure I fix this. <laughs> so thank you. It's hard when you do the ad edits because it cuts like red lines out this, then there's still a, a character right and the way that it's on his you could easily say like oh that's the right number yeah but it's actually mm -hmm. all right i'll fix it well thank you so yep. pretty much that was it there was just some standard change that so, so i have i have the email from you therese um yep. with with the edited contract but there was some mention about chris was going to send out another one and so do i have them is that the most current Chris was going to edit it, but he ran out of time. So he had me edit it. So instead oh, okay. of getting your edited copy from Chris, you got it from me. Okay. So that's the correct one. Okay. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Sorry. I should have been clear about that. So yeah. So that was really it. There was no. And then the only, I guess, major change would be the contract at, uh, before has, well, as long as I've been here anyways, they've been three-year contracts. I know we talked about like, what does the three-year contract even mean? Because technically you can. Yeah. So give your notice at any time days. and yeah. 90 days later be on on the way and so but then we talked about maybe a one-year thing or just renew it every year and then therese had um approached me on doing a two-year yeah. contract and it's so still the same copy you could still give 90 days but right so but but she won't because she's gonna hold it up she loves us yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so that was that was the other thing that we kind of changed yeah with. and so anyway, so, and the other one was- And this would go into effect on the- October 15th. 16th, right? Because it ends yeah, on end the 15th, next week. so it'd be Food 16th. Again. Right this week, stupid thing. Saturday. She's going to work on Saturday. Am I? Just, so. no. I don't know. We, <laughs> so, I work today. So we have to authorize it tonight or else. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, whatever. Or I just else she's going to be on comp term. time next week. I just oh, use the same term. 
as I was. So if I could, is the date wrong, Lindley? Again. Yeah. Is the date wrong? <laughs> no, I, I think it's right. Okay. Well, it said end whatever. Said October 15th, so 16th. Would be so, so, so. And ten percent of it. Yeah, <laughs> if not after the decimal, not after that. In front of tax this. free ten percent. Mm -hmm. Therese, you got to pay the bill. I just got bumped off again the third I time. Know. <laughs> I know. I'm waiting. I was waiting for something from them, but apparently the guy's dropping the ball. So I it told him I didn't want to put it on my credit card that I wanted them to bill us, but apparently. That's not happening. So well, just just give give me your credit card number and information. Yeah. I'll take care of it. <laughs> and, oh, and, your, and your social security number. And your social security yeah. number. And copy my birth certificate and driver's license too, right? <laughs> All right. But right. Must, I, I so, did, was just about to ask a question. Uh, do we have disability insurance as a benefit? We... I, yes, um, except we, we pay for it as an employee. We offer it, and some of us take advantage of it, and some of us do not. I just wanted to, I was looking at that paragraph, and, okay, we offer it. Good. We do. Yep, we offer disability insurance. You know, you can get all types through Colonial Life or Aflac, and we also offer vision insurance, but you have to pay for that. What we pay for is dental and health. Okay. Just so unless anybody had any further amendments <laughs> to the contract, I just need a motion to authorize myself to sign the contract as amended. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, so You're not in favor of that? <laughs> I don't need to. <laughs> oh, it's such a tough negotiation. Well, not now that there's an extra zero in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, forget it. Away. He's like, no, no, no. Oh, I wouldn't have heard that. <laughs> no, I now wouldn't. she's really going to take the other position. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Next year. yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. So um, we're done with that. Um, anything left on the town manager report that we didn't go over? Just um, so AJ Richard Morgan successfully completed the game of logging. They were all happy that they did it and that they took it. AJ and Morgan had been, you know, seven plus years and mm -hmm. they said they learned some new stuff. So that was good. Lisa Campbell uh, to the library. So Chris is finally, I told her after two years, Chris is going to get the discussion he wanted. Uh, she's speaking to the library trustees and she's going to make an appointment with us or with you mm -hmm. through me to um, talk about their finances just because it is not, you know, they get a, they're, no, they're like benefactors, you oh, know, right. they have an, endowment. an endowment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Lindley. I'm like, what's so thing? yeah, what's the word? So they have an endowment and it's just, you know, not maybe what we think it is. And Chris had been saying, you know, what's the long-term, what's long-term? Well, they got a new um, a member and Bennett Law, and he's just really like, oh, good. you guys yeah. need to do something because, you know, you have seven to 10 years and then you're broke. So, and I said, Chris has been wondering about this. What does support look like? And I also mentioned to Lisa, the idea that it had come up at a select board meeting about merging the school library with the town library. If they sold their building, would they have funds to make like this amazing library that was more handicap accessible. And so they were great. Lisa was going to go back and talk to uh, the library trustees. And, and um, I told them that you guys were, you know, willing and wanting. Now, I have to not have had the opportunity to take that up at the school because yeah, no. our meeting is until next Tuesday. Well, it would be them but having yeah, to that was, see if it works for them, if they'd be I think willing that would be a great idea. to do such a so. thing. So we talked about that. So they were going to come with us. Um, Aldrich and Elliott, uh, the final intended use plan uh, from the state's been issued mm. and they divided our phase two into two projects. And so the 750,000 portion is not eligible for any disadvantaged subsidy. Um, they'd give us a three, 30 year loan at 2%. 
And then the second phase, which is the 850,000, we would be eligible for lead subsidy up to 425,000 um, and then any balance left. So I ran the numbers for you. Um, I didn't see any Bennington forgiveness in here. Yeah, anymore. well, I think we got all we, we were to gonna get out of, the, out of the current loan we're carrying. Um, and I did talk to Aldrich and Elliot, but Elliot about the possibility of having to remove Sand Hill from the project because the federal earmark comes with its own hoops and you know we're just not sure so right now the decision was we're gonna we're gonna submit the permit to construct to the state for the entire project just because it has to be in by december 31st move towards you know mm -hmm. if the lawyer doing the easements will move towards our bond vote in march and then just kind of see with timing how that's going to sugar out um but the sand hill and, piece has to be done before, i mean the infrastructure in Sand Hill obviously has to be done before we spend our earmark, right? Well, if the earmark should cover the earmark. Um, there's not much water up there. That really, the biggest portion of the earmark is to redo Sand Hill with storm water mm -hmm. and just redoing the road, just building the new base and paving and all that. Mm -hmm. um, I did speak to a resident of Sand Hill and said, hey, just if heaven forbid, we had to kick Sand Hill out another year, how would you feel about it being gravel instead of um pavement for a year and he was like no way he's like our houses are so close it's so dusty he's like i mm. can't even imagine it'd be a bit of a maintenance nightmare too <clears throat> it, if you I get any so. erosion it'd come right down into church Street yeah so we Pleasant chatted Street. about that. i just said look i just want to be honest with you yeah. and, and he's like no but i said if worst case scenario is we know we'd have to throw money good money after bad we have to patch yeah. do a much do a better job of patching some of it but at this point it's kind of too early to tell the way that's going to sugar off um but it was it was sad to hear that because our rate we worked so hard to keep our rates down but yet because your rates didn't go up enough you don't qualify how much more is a rate the subsidy what, we i think that it said in here that the state said we're not eligible for disadvantaged subsidy as our user rates do not exceed one percent of the median household income i thought we you know work so good. hard to keep our rates about. down and then you know whoa 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 chris <laughs> <laughs> hey, i got it here in writing now it says yeah. paul that we haven't <laughs> met the one percent threshold yet um i'm going door to door with that yeah. i only make five thousand dollars a year so what's one percent of the median? <laughs> yeah, exactly so median income. yeah median. median income so we'll see yeah. We're moving forward with the process and just kind of keeping all of our But obviously on phase well. one is done. Which is the costlier one to the town. No, I'm sorry. Uh, phase oh, two, yeah. B, two, <laughs> two A, a and two B. Yeah. which is going to be the costlier the two needs to go first. Has to be done. The crystal drive has to be done because <clears throat> if we don't do the booster because then pump, you don't have then we the opportunity to add capacity to add the system, more users right? exactly so the eight hundred and fifty thousand has to happen um that section and that's going to be a two percent loan and yeah <laughs> dave's going to write so roughly <laughs> you said the other one would add you said that the small uh, so the large, phase right? 2b would add approximately four percent to the water budget i i'm saying both i think this oh, would be oh, yeah both would be and it because we're losing both would be four percent yeah it would create an approximate okay. water budget of four percent and um but yes so it's you know we're kind of the state has us over a barrel what does could you maybe get us what that would do to the water users if you the rate that, i just wonder so that we can start yeah, playing around with those numbers like so if, if the water budget went up four percent what does that do to the water end users yeah i I didn't, yeah, I didn't have time. So I don't. Well, it's 12, bucks a, 12 bucks a quarter, basically, you know, $300 right now. So, so, so that way we can start playing around with that number. Yeah. I'll, um, um, so we'll see what we can. So I, it's still early yet. And, um, so we'll see all my user fees increase question mark. Um, and again, there's, there is a lot of, anticipated construction to come out um so the early is we can get stuff out across the board is yeah gonna be your bet because you're just gonna see inflated prices due to mm -hmm. volume you know trade-off yeah. and aldrich and yeah i mean their energy you know has kind of stabilized came down a little bit and stabilized but 
Well, the problem is too, is that what Aldrich and Elliot said was that, you know, you have to have your permit to construct in by December. And that's what's holding me up is the state is, could take it four months or more to, so we can't, there's certain things that we can and cannot do mm -hmm. until the state does their part. And, um, but we're moving towards all of our deadlines and because mostly once you get to about April, it's almost not even worth advertising good. anymore. Like you exactly. might as well kick it to the next and and that's that's kind off of, season because yeah. you're just you're really gonna pay. Well, way I asked more Wayne than, what he was looking at right yeah. now and he what he had on the books for work next summer. And he's like, We have so many Time. holdovers from this year that didn't get completed and he said with pricing of materials and he's like, it's going to be a weird year next year. Again, so, yeah. and waiting to see what, you know, prices come out at this, are they going to, you know, drop mm. over the winter? What's going to happen? But not much. It's mainly the biggest is the easement that we got from the Adams and doing the whole, the belt booster pump, the dirt work mm -hmm. is limited. It's really it's also, that, yeah. that it's whole localized what work is going to be done. It's not yeah. scattered yeah. all over the place. Right. No, no, no. So that's it for the Tom Andrews report. <clears throat> all right. Select board meeting minutes from the 26. Do you have any Adjustments to that, are we good to approve as written? I'm good. All good, just need a motion to approve as written. So moved. Second. Moved by Lindley, second by Dave, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. And we had any other... It wasn't much. It was energy committee minutes. And then I did give you a copy of the information from Dubois and King mm -hmm. for the better connections update, just so you could see what they heard at Ford Fest and what they were talking about and their little mm -hmm. proposed next step design. So. And we had volunteer spotlight, Chuck. Yes. Yeah. Such a nice guy. Okay. Any other business come before the board? Therese, do I need to come in to sign anything? I'm heading back down to Florida. That's why I'm calling no, you're in. fine. We have three signatures on everything, so you're okay, Gene. You're leaving for Florida soon? I'm halfway there. Okay. <laughs> well, safe travels. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I'll be remote next meeting. <clears throat> okay. We all heard that. Lindley will be remote, so we won't be all sitting here going, what just remember, you're just going to have to log in about 15 times. <laughs> no, no, I'll have it fixed. Well, I she'll have paid it by then. Yeah. I will have paid it I by then. I don't know. Okay. The only other thing I, I asked Teresa sure. to follow up on was the, uh, the folks up on Geico Lane with the putting in, talking about putting in a, a well because of the situation with the water. And we had granted them a, a reprieve on their water bill. And I didn't know if we had any further word on that, uh, or whether or not we needed to visit that again, if, they, if that well wasn't going to happen anytime soon. Yeah, I haven't heard from them at all. So yeah. I can um, give them a call or send them a note. Okay. Browns. Okay. Anything else? Oh, my God. Dave, you, what will you do with that half I hour? I don't know. <laughs> I figured you'd be making a motion, Dave. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a safe trip, Gene. Give our best yeah. to Julie.